do you see like there's to me reading the book I was really like there's a very clear not not a clear but there's a distinction between how Catholic social teaching is viewed in Uganda mm. and say many of the major denominations in the United States. Um, like from writing the book, do you see any major differences between Ugandan social teaching and, and the major denominations in the States? Or is that kind of a too broad of a generalization? No, no, it's a good question. I mean, I, the principles of Catholic social thought would be global, right? And so, yeah, I agree. It would be shared. I, I just think partly because of the social deprivation many people are facing in Uganda, as well as the church's major public role in life. I just think it it resonates more, and you see people much more out in the open. I think in America, when we think of religious people in public life, we think of I don't know the moral majority or the religious right. And I know at least progressive friends of mine get all nervous. You know, like what is. <laughs> I don't want those religious people get, you know, like maybe Martin Luther King's okay, you know, you know, but, the, and, and I think also America has this kind of inbuilt sense of separation of church and state. And uh, of course the church is here, both Catholic, Protestant, everywhere. I mean, they do a lot of social work. So it's not to say that that's not happening, but I do think in Uganda, there's just the role of religion in public life is bigger. And therefore also leaders themselves, I think are much more influential and, and even a regular priest is going to have a, mu a much bigger social role in the community and providing for people. Uh, I mean, I remember the first time I lived in Uganda when I was a student and the priest I worked with, I think, Julian, you might have met him once, Father Joe Kokoza. He, he yeah. visited me when I had malaria. <laughs> yeah, I <had> malaria. <laughs> yeah. And he's a really good guy, you know, right? not every priest is, you know, a great guy, right? But, but he, uh, you know, when I first lived with him, I mean, remember all these um, women and others were lined up at the church and I said, you know, wh where are they going? He said, well, they need a ride to the bank and we're, we're trying to start bank accounts for them. And so we're, you know, we're getting micro loans and I was like, so all these people get in the back of his pickup truck and then they go down the road and, you know, and I just don't, you know, in my church in Omaha, I'm not expecting, you know, the priest to be transporting people to down to first national. <laughs> so, you know, there's just a much bigger role for, religious leaders and i think you know so what i try to do in the book then is by no means is this exclusive but these might be exemplars who who might even stand out at a national level but this is you know this is happening all over the society so it's kind of along the lines of what me and julian were talking about the other day um um i kind of feel like maybe we don't have as big of a appreciation for catholic church or any church as a society as a whole in the U.S., maybe because we aren't as reliant or affected right. as people in Uganda are. I mean, we have food banks and, you know, different drives and stuff, but I feel like um, churches there have, like, a huge impact, whether it be education, family structure, like, very big impacts. Right. That's why maybe it's I feel um, people in Uganda might have a better view of the Catholic Church and your general person in America. Right. When you hear Catholic Church here, you think of sexual uh, scandal. Right? Yeah, right. Right. No, and I think I think you point to uh, yeah. I like as in addition to what I said earlier, you mentioned schools. I mean, healthcare systems and hospitals or. Uh, and not, and that, again, that's common globally, but I think in Uganda, it's all, the best hospitals are also often run by the churches as well. So it's, it's a question, not just also of quantity, but also quality. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. Schools you mentioned, I, I already mentioned the role of parishes. I also think in general, Ugandans and Africans more broadly just have a deeply, a deep spirituality. And so yeah. the kind of secularism that's, even for religious people in the West, the world we live in is broadly secular. I mean, I, and that's not all bad. I mean, there are good things to understanding germ theory and, you know, recognizing the way things work in a scientific way. But, I, but at times it can cut us off, I think, from deeper dimensions of reality. Uh, and I think in Africa, there's just that awareness is very present to people. 
Uh, and therefore, I think also it's more natural for religious leaders to be in the public sphere because people have an inbuilt sense of the value of spirituality. Uh, so, and you know, you mentioned, of course, I think the Catholic Church, particularly in the West, has struggled with, and it's a needed. Um, I mean, not wholly unlike what happened in whether it was the Crusades or the Inquisition or other things, but I mean, we're we're dealing with the fallout of a terrible crisis and scandal and. I, that needs to happen. It's much better for the church to be dealing with a scandal than for kids to be sexually abused, right? So it's, and unfortunately, I think this stuff happens all over the world. So I don't think it's yeah. exclusive to us, but I do think we have to, I say that as a Catholic, you know, work through this and be more honest and authentic. And I think Pope Francis has showed that you can be honest and upfront and put things out there and not hide it. And, and you can still have some credibility, but you've got to be honest and you've got to clean things up and you have to be really repentant and try to make sure you don't commit the same sins you had before. So.